This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive as I'm taught the Word of God. My life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Give five people a high five, and then you may be seated this morning. So this morning, let us go to Luke chapter 5, and we are in our series on the miracles of the New Testament. We have the first miraculous catch of fish on the Lake of Gennesaret. This is the sixth miracle in the New Testament. One of my fathers in the faith, Fred Price, taught us that when we read the Bible, we should look for patterns and principles. And he said, once you see a pattern... Once you see a principle in the Word of God, you can implement that principle in your own life to get results. And once you implement that principle in your own life and you get an answer from God, then you can repeat that process over and over and over because God's Word is true and because God's Word works for anyone who will take time to work the Word of God. So what we're doing in 2023 is walking through the New Testament, dealing with the miracles of the New Testament. You know, when I came up with this thought, it amazed me I'd never done this before. It just seems like the most valuable use of time that we could perform is to go through and to look at every miracle in the New Testament. If God's people would learn to look for and then apply the principles and patterns they see in the miracles of the Bible, especially the New Testament, they could live their lives and hardly have an unmet need. Now, as we begin, I want to point out that this sixth miracle in the New Testament is akin to the first miracle in the New Testament, which was Jesus turning the water into wine at the wedding in Cana. In other words, this sixth miracle is like the first miracle in that it was a financial miracle. And if you want to fall out with me about that, well, you just go to Sprouts tomorrow and you buy some salmon or tuna and tell me that they gave it to you for free. Is it less expensive or more expensive than a tube of hamburger at Sam's? It's more. Amen? So it had value. Also, I want to point out that it would seem like these miracles could be out of order. After all, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law was two weeks ago enlisted as miracle number four. And we may make mistakes in the numbering, but we're just doing our best to go by the order we see in the Bible. The healing of Peter's mother-in-law is in Luke chapter four and the miraculous catch of fish where Peter was called to follow Jesus is in Luke chapter 5. So it would seem like that Jesus had gotten acquainted with these two families before the miraculous catch of fish in Luke chapter 5. Of course, the Bible, the Gospels don't tell us everything he did every day. That's why at the end of the Gospel of John, John says that if we wrote down everything he did, all, all, all the world could not hold all the books of all the deeds of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible does not tell us everything he did on every day. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. In other words, the fishing day, which was the night before, was over, and now they're washing their nets. He got into one of the boats. Now that phrase has always caught my attention 
He didn't ask permission. You know, when God comes into your life and interrupts your life, he doesn't always tell you everything he's going to do. He doesn't always explain the whys and wherefores. He doesn't always tell you what's going to happen next. He doesn't even ask permission. It's an amazing thing. Now, when I was a young man, I had to walk through this and I had to learn. But now that I'm not so young, I have learned, I can say without equivocation, I have learned to hear him and to obey him instantly and not waver. Because the work of God is not dependent on my understanding. I don't have to understand a thing, actually. If I will hear his voice and if I will obey him instantly and take action on what he says do, I may not understand it and it may not be logical, but there is a great big blessing down the road coming to me. Amen. And when I was a young man, I had to work through all that, but I, I don't anymore. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. I love the King James. Fear not. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. That always amazed me also, verse 11. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Now there are four huge miracles or factors to this miracle. First, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. So Jesus comes along and interrupts the life of someone who had been working. Let me repeat that because you loved it so much the first time. <laughs> Jesus came along and interrupted the life of someone who had been working. Peter said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. He didn't say, Master, we, we've, we spent the whole night smoking dope waiting for the welfare check. He said, no. He said, we've worked hard all night and caught, haven't caught anything. Have you ever felt like that? Have you, ever, have you ever had a whole year go by and thought, I worked as hard as I've ever worked in my entire life, and I don't have a doggone thing to show for it? I got my hand up. Well, I'll tell you what, there came a point in my life I decided I didn't want to live a year like that again. Amen. Good year, bad year for the world doesn't matter. I want to pull ahead. Amen. Second, Simon said, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And that's the key to everything. It reminds me while I'm, while I'm rehearsing this, the Lord's reminding me of the first miracle at the wedding of Cana. Mary, the mother of Jesus, told the servants, just do what he tells you to do. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. It may not make sense to the natural mind, just do it. Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so. Your life will change when you can live a life of faith uh, because you say so, Lord, faith. Amen. Amen. I don't have to understand it. It doesn't have to be logical. What difference does it make whether my little pea brain can get my mind around something God told me to do anyway? He told Moses to speak to the rock. You know, the prophet of God told, commanded, the, threw a stick in the water and the axe head floated. All kinds of crazy stuff in the Bible. Uh, I, my job is not to understand it. My job is to, that's why we did what we did in the service. My job is not to understand it. My job is not to psychoanalyze it. My job is to do it and believe God. And then we get results. Amen. Third, and the Bible records when they had done so. Everybody shout it out loud. When they had done so. Shout it again. When they had done so. 
The Bible records when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Now these, these guys had been out all night the night before and it worked all night and it caught nothing. But Jesus said to put down your nets for their, a catch and then all of a sudden they caught so many fi fish that the nets began to break and both boats began to sink. And fourth, action is required. Say it out loud, action is required. Say it again, action is required. Now we're going to see this over and over and over in these miracles. Action is required. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So action is required. When they had done so. When they had done so. When they had done so. The problem with a lot of believers is they never had a when they had done so moment. Peter's boat was his seed faith giving. He gave his boat first to Jesus who used it for preaching the gospel. Then Jesus gave it back saying, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. He was saying, I intend to multiply your giving by filling this empty boat with a record catch of fish. Just launch out into the deep, throw your nets over and I will do the rest. I'll tell you what, thank God, thank God. He showed me many, many, many years ago to confess this. Thank you, Father God. You blessed the work of my hands. So I can't sit home and do nothing, but I can take action. And as I take action, I can believe God that God blesses the work of my hands. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get a better amen? amen? Lift your hands up. Look up to heaven and say, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. you blessed the work of my hands. Now it's not good enough to say it on Sunday. You got to say it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Say it again. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. you bless the work of my hands. Bless the work of my hands. This was God saying to Peter that day from Hebrews 6, 14, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Saying, Surely I will, bl saying, Surely I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. That's what God wants to do. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now, Peter was a commercial fisherman. Peter fished for a living in order to support his family. You understand, when I go fishing, it doesn't matter whether I catch anything or not. And uh, I don't know, something about me. If I catch it out of some old nasty lake or somewhere, I'm not going to eat it anyway. I'm going to throw it back. Amen. So, but, but he was not a casual fisherman. He was a commercial fisherman. He fished for a living to support his family. He understood Jesus' language about the deep. Peter knew that is where the biggest fish were. What Peter did not know was the principle of seed faith and seed faith giving. Peter did not yet understand the principle of seed faith giving, that seed given in faith is the only thing that God can multiply back into your life. You know, I miss Zig Ziglar. We used to go over, Zig Ziglar used to have a, a luncheon at uh, San Francisco's Steakhouse, I think it was called, in Dallas. It was a great deal. It was a ticket price. That's actually where I got the idea for the power lunches. And uh, you, had, you had a great meal, then you heard Zig Ziglar. So and I heard him say one day, a lot of people are waiting for their ship to come in. Problem is, they never sent one out. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the water, and after many days it will return to you. All this is in the Bible, but people had not seen it. Jesus came to bring a whole new way of living. Seed faith, seed, seed given in faith is the only thing that God can multiply back into your life. Think about the farmer. You know, the further we get from the land, the less we know. The further we get from the land, the less we understand. But in order for the land to multiply a seed... You got to get the seed out of the packet and you got to get the seed into the ground. Jesus himself said, unless a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it falls to the ground and die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And so whatever we're talking about, I don't care if you're talking about peaches or soybeans or tomatoes or whatever, ain't nothing going to happen until the seed gets in the ground. And then when the farmer or the gardener sows the seed, then they what? Then they began to look for a harvest. I could not count the times I went out and walked the fields with my grandfather. He would get up in the morning and he would check the weather 
And then depending on the time of year we were visiting, he'd go out to those fields and he'd just walk through those fields. Why? That was his future. That was his livelihood. That's where his multiplication process was taking place. Hallelujah. He had done, he had done the plowing and he had done the sowing and he was watching the weather. <laughs> he would pray for rain sometimes, amen. But then it was the earth that brought forth the multiplication. This is God blessing man and man gives God no credit for it. Say it out loud. Seed given in faith is the only thing that God can multiply back into my life. Say it again. Seed given in faith is the only thing that God can multiply back into my life. Now, Peter knew about tithing. All good Jews tithe. They gave an exact 10% of what they had earned to God. The tithe is, in effect, a payment due, a thanksgiving of 10% after the income is made. Tithing is a seed owed. Tithing is a seed owed. Say it out loud. Tithing is a seed owed. Say it again. Tithing is a seed owed. But seed faith giving is a seed sowed. It's not tithing. See, Peter and his companions, Peter and his partners, <laughs> they, they were Jewish folk. They knew about tithing. And yet they still worked hard all night and didn't have anything. And Jesus comes along <laughs> with an amplification of the truth from the Old Testament, a whole new way of living. Seed faith giving is a seed sowed. Say it out loud. Seed faith giving is a seed sowed. Say it again. Seed faith giving is a seed sowed. Peter doubtless was a tither and knew that the tithe was the 10% he owed on all of his income. But still, Peter had been missing the benefits of seed faith giving. His boat was empty, his nets were worn, and his partners were discouraged. Peter said to Jesus, Master, we've worked hard all night and yet have caught nothing. Said out loud, I'm going to dare to give God my best. Then I'm going to believe God for his best. So was Peter a hard worker? Yes. Was he a tither? Doubtlessly, yes. Was Peter a man with a financial need? Yes. Was Peter a man occupied, or we could say preoccupied, with the futility of his own efforts? Yes. Peter had not yet realized that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was introducing a, a new way of life for the people of God to enjoy. Jesus had come to fulfill the law of Moses and the Old Testament and to give his blood in the New Testament or a new covenant that each believer might have life and that they might have that life more abundantly. Not less abundantly, more abundantly. Part of why Jesus had come was to bring an entirely different way of giving, which, if a man would freely enter into it, would bring forth an abundant harvest of multiplied return, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now look, I see new people and uh, whenever I get to a passage like this or a message like this, I think people think that, uh, you know, it's preacher talk. When Sue and I got serious about all of this, the church was just weeks from going under. We had started construction August of 1980. 7, October 19, if I remember right, 1987, the stock market crashed. That didn't affect anybody we were pastoring because nobody had anything anyway. But the recession that followed impacted people at the church because people were losing their jobs. We moved in that building up there on I-30 the third Sunday of March 1988. And I mean, it was just nip and tuck. And I'm telling you what, you know, some of you pay money for nipping and tucking, but I'm telling you what, <laughs> financially, financially, nip and tuck is no fun at all. 
And I mean, we were up there and we were just weeks away from it going under. And we didn't have anything. We would have saved it if we could, but we didn't have anything. We had some money in retirement accounts. But you know, you got to pay tax on that to get that out. And man, we just got serious. Second Chronicles 20, 20, if, I'm, if I remember the reference right, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will succeed and prosper. Amen. We heard, <laughs> you know, every, they, there's a whole camp now called the prophecy camp. I, I never heard of anything so bogus in my entire life. Look, I'm 67 years old. And except for the one I married and the one I birthed, I've only met one prophet in my entire life, 67 years. Kenneth Hagin, the one that went to, went to be with the Lord in 2003. I've only met one apostle in my entire life, Bud Sickler, missionary Bud Sickler. He's been gone 23, now, 23 years now. And I've only met one prophet slash apostle in my life. And that was Lester Summerall. So people want to act like they can leave Faith Christian Center, go on down the road, get the same thing somewhere else. No, you can't. No, 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 that's not, it's not out there. But anyway, I heard the prophet of God talk about Isaiah 119 and being willing and being obedient. Not just being obedient, but being willing. And he talked about how that in his life he had been obedient, but he hadn't been willing because there's a lot of pressure out here to not get too blessed. Well, we just got past that. You may wonder why I don't care about that. Well, I got past it. Amen. And I just got to where I decided that I was going to look to the Lord, discipline myself to look to the Lord and uh, not look to man. And it's a discipline in the ministry. We never saw any of this. We, we ate at Joe's Stone Crab a few weeks ago in Miami and I texted my family. I said the first time we ate here, Nearly, that was nearly 30 years before, was with Kenneth Hagen, the one that went to be with the Lord in 2003. And I never thought I'd, I'd be back 20-something years later after having given $8 million into the gospel personally. Amen. Amen. Don't tell me I saw that. I didn't see that. And don't tell me I believe God for it. I couldn't have believed God for that. We just headed out. Everything is terrible post-COVID. Customer service is terrible. Everything is terrible. I, I tell you what, I, I, I wonder sometimes if I'm the only one that can't hardly stand it. It's all terrible. Call somebody, you know, and if they show up within a month, you're lucky. I mean, it's just awful. But I say that if you will dare to step out and give God his best, give God your best, then turn around and believe God for his best. I hath not seen nor ear heard what God has in store for them that love him. You cannot even begin to sit here and dream or think or imagine or comprehend how far down the road God can take you if you will just see God as your source and do what Peter said, Lord, it, doesn't, it may not make sense, but I'm going to, at your word, I'm going to do what you said. Because you say so, I'm going to do what you said. You have no idea how far you could get down the road. Now look, some, some, some will believe what I'm saying and some won't. That's not on me. I'm delivering the message. I'm telling you my story. I'm telling you what God did in our lives. Amen. It's unbelievable the power of seed sown in obedience to a, a word from the Lord. Now, first of all, we do the written word of God. That's why we know Peter was a tither. He was a Jewish guy. They're tithers, uh, especially back then. Today, I guess most of them are tithers. Back then, I'm sure all of them were tithers. And so, but following the written word of God, 
is part of the recipe now. See, they didn't know anything about a Holy Spirit. They didn't know, they didn't know there was such a thing as a Holy Spirit. They didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. But you and I have come into a new covenant and we have received the benefits of a new covenant. And one of the benefits of a new covenant is the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is our father and he is our shepherd and he leads us and he guides us not, and not into a bad place. He leads us and he guides us into a good place saying, surely blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee. When Jesus asked Peter to give his boat, Jesus knew the boat was empty and the nets were worn. Jesus knew business was bad and that Peter's family was in need. Jesus understood that Peter was discouraged from toiling all night with no tangible results. Look at my life. Observe my life. Check out my life. When I need something, I don't get, go get a second shift job at Albertsons. I pray. I believe I receive. And the money comes. And you're so blessed you don't even realize it. Because the world's not going to send us any money. The world's not sending us any money. The world's not sending us any money. The world's not going to send us any money. So God will bless you. Just answer my prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I said, God will bless you. Just answer my prayer. Amen. But Jesus knew something else too. Jesus knew that he had come to bring men like Peter life and more abundantly, life more abundantly. Jesus knew that he had come to show Peter how to multiply his efforts. Not that you don't have any effort, but to multiply your efforts. Jesus had come to show Peter how to generate fruit with New Testament anointing on him. God wants to multiply your efforts. You just need to get some seed faith giving anointing on your life. That's all. God wants to multiply your efforts. You just need to get some seed faith giving anointing on your life. Hebrews 6, 14 saying, surely I will bless thee. Saying, surely blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee. Say it out loud. God wants to multiply my efforts. Say it again. God wants to multiply my efforts. And listen, I've just about had it up to my fullness and I don't want to hear it uh, about, you know, being a, Prosperity preacher and all of that. Listen, when people are having trouble buying eggs, when people are having trouble buying gasoline to put in their vehicle to go to work, look, you either are a prosperity minded person or you don't have any sense at all. Because they have printed so much money, prices are skyrocketing. It is literally insane what they have done. So you've got to prosper more than you have ever prospered. I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the blessing of the Lord is on this house and the windows of heaven are open above this house and the Lord our God is pouring out a blessing such as you will not even be able to contain it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that old world out there may be eating uh, ground up crickets. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm not eating no crickets. I'm eating real food. Amen. 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 Look at John 10, 10. Jesus said, I have come that they might have. Jesus, say it out loud. Shout it out loud. Jesus said, Jesus said I, have come I have come that they might have. They might Shout have. out loud again. Jesus said, Jesus said I, have come I have come that they might have. They might have. Why then? Do so many preachers preach a bogus gospel of doing without? A bogus gospel of having nothing. Jesus said in John 10, 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life, and that they might have life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I've been preaching all of these years. The very first ser series, it's on the app, you can look it up. It's about the story of Joseph. He was sold into slavery, didn't matter, God blessed him. He worked in Potiphar's household, didn't matter, God blessed him. Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife lied about him, had him thrown into prison, didn't matter, God blessed him. And then he rose to be number two in the greatest empire of the day by age 30. Didn't matter, didn't matter, did, because when the blessing of the Lord comes upon 
You, brother, it doesn't matter what the liars are lying about and what the naysayers are saying, and it doesn't matter what's going on to the right or to the left. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's in the Old Testament. People still don't get it. When his disciples wanted to incite a riot and have a certain city burned to the ground, Jesus replied in Luke 9, 56, for the Son of Man is come, is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. To save them. The Bible says in James 1, 7, every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And to the children of God, the beloved apostle John wrote in 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. We had a lady in the church, she's here this morning. One of her daughters had a birthday, so she lined up over here at the Gaylord, to a big weekend bash and, you know, rented rooms for everybody and, you know, food for everybody and a meeting room for everybody and had a big bash for the, do the grown daughter's birthday. Well, she checked in. She said, I used to go to that church. Is that, is that preacher still preaching prosperity? She said, yeah. How do you think I'm paying for all this? <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, do, I am determined to live in excellent health from this day to my last day. From this day to my last day, I am determined that the devil not get any kind of a foothold in my life whatsoever. I am determined from this day to my last day that I'll eat what I want, drive what I want, vacation where I want, do what I want, live with I, where I want. Hallelujah. I'm determined that from this day to my last day, we'll build what we want at Faith Christian Center and the money's marching right in the door. Hallelujah. I tell you what, we're preaching prosperity here and we're preaching healing here and we're preaching deliverance here and we're preaching success here and we don't care what the devil or the devil's crowd have to say about it. They murder 64 million babies. I am not the least bit concerned about what they think. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pastor a blessed of the Lord church. Hallelujah. And I have a blessed of the Lord congregation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is on this house. Amen. The blessing of the Lord is on me. The blessing of the Lord is on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without apology, I declare that we serve a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a blesser. He answers prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not only that, he performs miracles on behalf of his children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is impossible with man is possible for us because we have come to know Jesus, the son of the living God. What is impossible for them is possible for us. Hallelujah. And we delight in him. We delight in living in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. So there's no sickness at work in us and there's no poverty at work in us and the devil's not running us. Hallelujah. We are the people of God. We are the chosen of the Lord. We are the sons and daughters of God and his hand is upon us. Can I get an amen? Can I get a better amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. He's my daddy. Paul said, we, we call him Abba. Amen. Father, he's my father. He's my daddy. How many of you fathers want your children on welfare? How many of you fathers want your children in a wheelchair? How many of you fathers want your children bedfast with some sickness? Not a one, not a one, not a one. Amen. Well, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Oh my God, the anointing's going to fall. How much more? How much more? How much more? 
Does our Father in heaven delight in being a blessing to his children? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift both hands and say, how much more? How much more? How much more? Tell your neighbor, God wants to bless me, and I think I'm going to let him. Tell the neighbor on the other side, God wants to bless me, and I think I'm going to let him. Paul wrote in Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So everywhere we look in the New Testament, you see that Jesus has come that we might have. Jesus has come that we might experience life more fully. Jesus demonstrated abundant life to everybody he met. Not one time, not one time, not one time did he deny healing or deliverance or deliverance from a devil to anybody. The only exception was the Syrophoenician woman. He said, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. But she said, yes, master, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. And he said, for such an answer as that, you may go, your daughter is well. He did not deny healing to anybody. He didn't deny blessing to anybody. I'm telling you what, the kingdom of God is a free-for-all. Doesn't matter where you were born, doesn't matter what your color, doesn't matter what your tribe, that's why all this racism is devil talk. All this racist talk is satanic talk. God doesn't care what your color is. God doesn't care where you came from. God doesn't care what your native language was. He is a blesser. Our God is a blessing God. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get a better amen? amen. Let me tell you what. I'm so frustrated because I'm telling you, brother, I'm ready to rock and roll, but I'm out of time. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. I want to give an opportunity for people to make their decisions for the Lord, commit their lives to Christ. You may be here this morning and think, man, this is crazy. Yes. It's insane. How much God wants to bless your life. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But as much as Satan wants to wreck you and to destroy you, multiply that times a thousand, turn it around, and that's how much God wants to bless you and heal you and save you and prosper you. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. He didn't say it was a good idea. He said you must be born again. That's what we're preaching here. Being born again unto God by the Spirit. Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior, but I want to do so this morning. I never even heard that he wants to bless me, that he, that he wants to do good things in my life. That's good news. You better believe it's good news. And why the church is keeping good news from people, I have no idea. It is good news. He wants to forgive you. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. If you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, but you'd like to do so this morning, lift a hand up, lift it up, lift it up so I know who I'm talking to and who wants to be included in this prayer as we conclude this service. Pastor, that's me. I want, to be, I want you to pray for me. I want to be included in this prayer. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to live for God. I want all the good stuff you talked about in this message to come into my life. You may be here this morning and you're backslidden. You're not living for the God like you used to. There was a time in your life you told God that you loved him and you meant it when you prayed it. But over the passing of time, you've gone back to your old friends. You've gone back to your old habits. You've gone back to what you used to do. And you're not living for the Lord like you used to. The word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
How many this morning would say, Pastor, I'm away from God. I'm not living for the Lord, but I don't want to. I don't want to miss another good thing that God has for me. I want to recommit my life to God. I want to make it right and I want to live for Him. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. For the sake of those online, watching online that may be desirous of prayer, everybody in the room, let's pray this prayer out loud together. If you're watching online, you pray with us. Believe God. God's doing a work in your life. Father God, in Jesus' name, I come to you this day and I confess that I have sinned. Days gone by. I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing and I've lived for self. But I turn from that old way of living and I give you my life. I believe in my heart. Father God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Come into my life. Forgive me. Save me. I thank you for not rejecting me, but for receiving me. Unto yourself. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And everybody in agreement with that prayer said amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, you can contact us at fccarlington.com slash salvation. Let us know about your decision, and we'll be, we'd be happy to send you a copy of God's very own child. If you need a Bible, let us know you need a Bible. We'll send you a Bible. Amen. God has blessed us, and we're able to be a blessing to you. Can you give the Lord a shout of victory this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.